Hi, my name is Roger. Welcome to this edition of Book Break. Today I'll be sharing with you some excerpts from the first three chapters of Because of the Rabbit by Cynthia Lord. It is a Blue Stem Award nominee for 2022 and it is geared toward ages 8 to 12. One quick note about this book before we begin. The main character's grandparents are French and there are some French words in here. Hamer is grandpa and Le Pas is rabbit. Monsieur is mister. A lot of chapters have a number or a name. This book uniquely has a little bit of facts about rabbits. So each chapter has a fact about rabbits, which is kind of interesting. So we're going to start with chapter one. Rabbits are crepuscular, most active at dawn and dusk. A rabbit, I heard Dad say into the phone. Is he hurt? Mom sighed at the bowl of mashed potatoes in her hands. She likes it when all four of us can eat supper together. But when a main game warden gets a call, he has to go. Even if it's supper time and tomorrow is the biggest day of my life. How long's the rabbit been there? Dad asked. Mom had made all of my favorite foods. Meatloaf, mashed potatoes, corn on the cob, and blueberry pie for dessert. But I was too excited to eat very much. My older brother, Owen, leaned toward me. Who's the head? He said, excited or scared. I grinned. When we were little, whenever we had mixed feelings about something, Owen and I would pretend those feelings were running in a race. We hadn't done it in a long time. Excited is way ahead, but scared is coming on strong, I said. Mom passed me the bowl of mashed potatoes. I'm sure most kids feel that way on the night before school, she says. I nodded, though we both knew I wasn't most kids. Most kids went to school for the first time in preschool or kindergarten or maybe first grade. Not many started in fifth. In fact, I was pretty sure I'd be the only fifth grader at Lakeview Elementary School who never gone off to school before. It wasn't that I hadn't done schoolwork. I'd done plenty. My lessons had been at the kitchen table, though. Science experiments were done in the bathroom or on the front porch in case they exploded or leaked. I read books on my bed or on the couch or even floating in a kayak on the lake in front of our house. Being homeschooled had many good parts, but the best part had always been Owen. We made up games and shared secret jokes. We told each other stories and collected rocks together. When Owen did something, he'd ask me if, I wa if I'd want to do it too. Being four years apart didn't matter. Until last year. Owen told Mom and Dad he wanted to see what public school was like. So he went to high school and was gone all day. He made new friends. Then he added after school things like theater and playing right field on the baseball team. What he subtracted was me. Mom said it sometimes happens as brothers and sisters get older, but I didn't think it would happen to us. Maybe excited has marbles in her pocket, Owen said, and she drops them on the track so scared we'll slip on them. I imagined excited pulling a whole handful of marbles out of her pocket and dropping them one by one. Okay. Give me your address, I heard Dad say. Don't touch him, I'll be right over. As he put his phone in his pocket, Mom said, let me fix you a plate to take with you, Gabe. Thanks, but just put it in the fridge, Dad said, pulling on his green warden jacket. I'll warm it up when I get back. This shouldn't take too long. A woman found a wild rabbit stuck between two wooden pickets in her fence. Guess he tried to jump through and only made it halfway. I hope I don't have to take the fence apart. The lady is already fuming about being late for something. Can I come? I asked. But Emma, said Mom, I made all your favorite things and you haven't eaten more than a few bites. Thank you, Mom. I love it all, but my stomach's too jumpy to eat. I thought about school all summer, but now the big day was tomorrow. Little worries were creeping in. What if the other kids knew things that I didn't? 
What if everyone already had their own friends and didn't want more? Scared jumped right over those marbles. I could pass you tools, I called to Dad. And the lady will probably be nicer with the kid there. He paused, his hand on the doorknob, and glanced back at Mom. She sighed. All right, we'll save the pie for later. Don't keep her out late, though, Gabe. She has to be up early. I bolted from my seat so fast that our golden retrievers, Molly and Maggie, started barking like there was an emergency. Aren't you coming? I asked Owen. He shook his head. I have to call Jordan. I'm hoping to convince him to try out for soccer with me. Soccer? When did he decide that? You can tell me all about it when you get home, Owen said. I hope we can just wiggle the rabbit free, Dad said. But let's bring something to put him in just in case he's injured. I've got a big plastic bin in the barn that should hold him until we get him to the rehab center. A bunny in a box, I said. Dad smiled. Rabbit wrangler, that's my job. Animals are my favorite part of Dad's job. If the rehabilitation center is already closed for the night, Dad might even bring an injured or orphaned animal home with him. Once I came downstairs to breakfast and found a fox sleeping in a box by the wooden stove. Another morning, Mom screamed when she went to put water in the coffee pot and there was a turtle with a cracked shell in a plastic tub in our kitchen sink. A beaver with a bad foot even slept in a cage in our barn one evening. Owen says we run a wildlife bed and breakfast. Our dogs, Molly and Maggie, are used to it. They just give the newcomer a quick sniff and then accept it as belonging. Sometimes, Dad even lets me come with him to release an animal back into the wild. As soon as he opens the cage door or, flip, or the box flaps, a look flashes in the animal's eyes that I can't explain. But it, it, it knows it's free. Then there's a rush of wings reaching for the sky or paws racing for the woods, and it's gone. I should have known better, though. Rabbits are tricksters. When I was little... I'd always beg my grandfather to tell me stories about Monsieur Le Pas, Mr. Rabbit. It happened once. Pepper would start, and it, would, and it was like the whole world slowed down to listen. I'd hang on his every word until Monsieur Le Pas had cheated and sneaked his way through every near miss and danger, little, smart, fast as the wind on a mountaintop, and full of surprises, anything is possible with rabbits. Chapter 2. A Frightened Rabbit Can Truly Be Scared to Death This must be it, Dad said. Up ahead was a clearing with a small gray house and a white picket fence out front, no bikes, no toys, just an old woman outside holding a broom. As we got out of the truck, she called to us. I tried to poke the rabbit through, but he's wedged in there tight. Poke him through? I disliked her immediately. Don't touch him, ma'am, Dad shouted back pleasantly. He has to be nice to everyone, unless they're breaking the law. I guess there wasn't an actual law about poking a rabbit with a broom. Dad grabbed his toolbox from the back of the truck and gave me the plastic bin and lid. As I got closer to the fence, I gasped. The rabbit certainly was stuck. His back feet, little puff tangle, tail, dangled on one side, his head and front feet on the other. But what shocked me was how small he was. And he wasn't medium, medium brown like a cottontail rabbit or rusty tan like a snowshoe hare in the summer. He was a soft, honey gold color with a brown nose and front paws. He seemed to be frozen in fear except for the little, his little back rising and falling with each breath. Well, there's a surprise, said Dad. Do any of your neighbors have a pet rabbit? The woman shook her head, not that I know of. Dad stroked his chin, thinking, Look, I'm glad to free it, but as a game warden, I only deal with wildlife. You'll need to call your local animal control officer to come get this bunny. They handle pets. How long does that take? The woman asked. I'm supposed to be at a meeting. I can give you the spin to keep him in until animal control gets here, Dad said, but I can't. Let it hop back into the woods, the woman said. 
That's where rabbits belong. Not this rabbit, I said. He's not wild. She shot me an angry look. Well, he's not my rabbit. I turned to Dad. You know he doesn't stand a chance in the woods, not with all those foxes and owls. Dad looked from, looked from the lady to the rabbit to me. Well, there's no need for him to suffer while we figure it out. He leaned down and ran his fingers along the rabbit's sides. His ribs are too round to go forward, so let's try easing him back the way he came in. Em, take the bin and get behind me, but not too close. Those hind, not too close to those hind legs. Even a little bunny's got a kick. The bin was ridiculously huge for such a tiny rabbit. It won't jump up and attack us, will it? The woman asked. I saw Dad trying not to smile. I don't think so. But maybe you'd like to go in your house, ma'am, just in case. Emma and I are trained rabbit wranglers, but I can't guarantee your safety. I bit the inside of my lips so I wouldn't giggle. The woman didn't look like she believed Dad, but she took some steps backward anyway. The rabbit's hind legs were hanging down limp on my side, on my side of the fence, but his little tail twitched. My hands were aching to touch him and see if he was so, as soft as he looked. But I didn't want to scare him even more. Don't worry, I said, sitting on the ground behind him. We're here to help you. Between the pickets, I watched Dad's hands on the rabbit's shoulders. Come on, don't fight it, he said turning the rabbit gently. You're squeezed in here pretty good. It's going to take some work to get you out. The bunny's hind legs started kicking, wiggling him a little more onto my side. It's helping, I said. He's coming this way. Good. Set the bin on its side so he'll back into it, Dad said. Then, as soon as he's inside, tip it upright and throw the lid on. As I was reaching for the bin, the rabbit gave a mighty kick, and suddenly he was out. For one second, he looked towards the woods, and I saw it, that same flash of wild in his eyes, seeing freedom. Then he, then he leaped, a funny little jump spin, landing on my leg. Maybe he was just so happy to be out of the fence that he couldn't help himself. But it gave me a chance to grab him. Got him! Great job, Em, Dad turned to look behind him. Ma'am, let's call your local. But the lady was already in her car. Well, what do you expect me to do with them, Dad called. Her car window was already rolled up, though. She backed out of the driveway and took off down the road. Dad and I stood there, listening, listening to the sound of her tires crunching the rocks. I held the rabbit against me, his hind legs tucked into the crook of my elbow. He was scared to death, still as stone except for his heart beating wildly under my hand and his whiskers tickling my neck with each panting breath. You can't leave him here, I told Dad firmly. That lady doesn't care what happens to him. The nearest animal shelter is in Wrangley, but I'm sure they're closed for the night now, Dad sighed. I guess we could bring him home, and then I could take him to the shelter in the morning. I tried to act calm, when really I felt like dancing. I couldn't wait to show Owen. Can we go after school? We rescued him together. I want to be there. I suppose so, Dad said, but we better drive to the store and see if they sell rabbit food and carrots. Walking back to the truck, the rabbit hit his, hit his face against my neck. His golden fur surrounded by my red hair. When an animal trusts you, it fills you up with a warm feeling. I rested my cheek against his ears. They were softer than I'd imagined. Chapter 3. If a rabbit refuses food, it can quickly become an emergency. After I closed my bedroom door behind me, I set the rabbit on the braided rug in front of my dresser. I wish I could just let him hop around my room all night but rabbits are chewers. So I dumped the clothes out of my pink plastic laundry basket and lined the bottom with a towel to make it comfy. Then I put the water bowl, food, and hay in the corners of the basket and pushed it up beside my bed. We'd done that when Molly and Maggie were tiny puppies so we could reach down and pat them if they whimpered at night. 
It seemed like a perfect plan. But when I turned around, the rug was empty. Two back feet and a puffed tail were disappearing under my dresser. Uh-oh, I dropped to my knees. The rabbit was underneath. He gave a tiny sneeze. Sorry, I said, did you find some dust bunnies to play with? He wiggled out and I tried to catch him. Rabbit Wrangler to the rescue. He was as fast as a cartoon character though. He'd hop in one direction and just as I reached for him, suddenly he'd twist his body almost in half and race the other way. It took three tries and a few scratches before I got my palm on his back. He flattened himself on the floor and I wrapped my hands around his middle. Carrying him to the laundry basket, I kissed the top of his head. His ears were so warm. I, I wanted to cuddle him, but it was almost midnight now, and my alarm was set for six. Time for bed. In the laundry basket, he sniffed the plastic sides and pushed his nose into the vents. He dug into a corner and bunched up the towel. Then he rose on his hind legs and put his front paws on top of the basket. He wasn't heavy enough to tip it over, but one back foot went into his water dish. I couldn't help giggling. Then he gave a big hop right out of the basket. Oh no, two long hops and he was under my nightstand. He started to chew the cord on my lamp. No, as I reached for him, he went under my bed. Then I had an idea. I took everything out of the laundry basket and sat on the edge of the bed, holding the basket upside down on my knees. I waited until the rabbit came out from under the bed. I pretended I wasn't paying attention to him, but the next time he hopped past, I dropped the laundry basket over him like a big pink plastic tent. He had plenty of air with all the vents and he couldn't hop out. Lifting one edge of the basket, I slid the hay bin and water bowl underneath. Then I pushed the carrot and the droopy parsley through the vent. But as I climbed onto the bed, the laundry basket started moving across the floor. The rabbit was pushing it with his nose. His water would probably get spilled, but I smiled anyway as I turned out the light. Once again, the title of the book is Because of the Rabbit. The author is Cynthia Lord. 